Hello, my name's Adam Femi and I'm a canine behaviourist and trainer based in Hertfordshire. Today I'm going to be talking to you about gun dog training. I don't feel trial myself, but I enjoy picking up on local shoots with my dogs and helping pet dog owners improve their relationships with their gun dogs. Gun dog group includes the retrievers, the HPRs, which is hunt, point and retrieve, the setters and pointers, and also the spaniels. I always encourage all owners to try and get the best out of their dogs on a walk or out and about, making sure exercise is constructive. And this can be done with any dog, not just the gun dogs. But of course, it's more instinctive for the gun dogs to do things like flush, game, retrieve, want to use their nose, etc. As a behaviourist, I often see breeds such as the Cocker Spaniels, the Springer Spaniels, the working Labradors, these, these breeds that have been selectively bred for their energy levels, obviously going to be very important on a shoot day. These breeds within a pet home environment can become problematic or show behavioural problems. Gun dog training can be very useful here, even if not at a serious level, but at a fun level to help the dog have an outlet, an energy outlet, to prevent behaviours such as obsessions, possessive behaviours, pacing, territorial guarding etc so I always encourage people who come along to my classes with higher energy dogs to get their dogs focused whether that be with agility gun dogs working trials etc gun dog training is about basically getting good discipline to start with we need the heel command the recall command the dog to be steady so the stay on the whistle preferably rather than the voice although some people will use voices especially gamekeepers rather than a whistle but what we must make sure with any command that we give, of course, is that the dog understands it. If it doesn't understand it, we should be teaching it. Once a dog does understand the command, we must enforce the command we give. This has to be shown to the dog in many different situations. So within the shooting field, we've got to make sure that the dog understands to drop or sit within a woodland area, within a cover crop, out on an open wheat field or within rape etc. I always start training my dogs with tennis balls with a young dog then we start to introduce the canvas dummies the reason for this is they are more realistic they match the weight of a pheasant or a partridge or a rabbit so we get the dogs used to carrying the weight obviously we need the dog to bring the game back without any damage so we need to teach the dog to retrieve in a nice sensible way and I will always start in a calm quiet area without any distractions the ultimate goal is to get into the shooting field where there is going to be game livestock potentially guns which is a dangerous situation potentially for a dog so we need to make sure we have good discipline good foundations build off of them to get the end result and for me the end result is a picking up dog others it may be field trialing or competing in working tests but for me, it's to end up with a good sound dog that we can take onto a shoot that's steady, reliable, and it's safe. Some of the exercises we may require a dog to do on a shoot day may include flushing game, which is using its nose to find the game within a cover crop or long grass, etc. Pushing the game out, sitting steady as the bird flies away or the rabbit runs away. Um, obviously staying well out the way of the animal so that the, um, the shot is clear and the dog won't get injured. We've also got things with the setters and the pointers, obviously setting and pointing. This is freezing on the scent once the dog is sure there is scent within the area. We have the retrieving, which of course is once the game has been shot or wounded. We want the dog to be collecting that for us on command, not just chasing off after it. Much of the gun dog work is about steadiness, good foundations, making sure the dog is well mannered within the presence of game, scent, etc. With the gun dog, we always have to appreciate scent, wind, that's very important. I always test the wind just with a bit of grass before we go out, just to see where it's coming from. That's going to help putting the dog in a position to win in those early days of training, but also massively important when we're getting to the shooting field. The dog's using its nose, massively powerful organ for the animal, and we want to make sure we get the best out of the dog. If you've got a pet dog and you're just using the ball, throwing the ball into some long grass, throw it into the wind initially, just so the dog gets that, that the, the, the idea of using his nose or her nose, which obviously is going to make the game much more constructive 
a lot of pet dogs I'll go and see will be playing but with their eyes so they're very obsessive the collies in the park with the ball throwers etc um, and what I always try to get owners to do is make the play constructive get the best out of the play game and make the dog work as hard as you can especially the higher energy dog we need to make sure we mentally and physically drain that dog during our exercise sessions this is going to help with preventing behavioral problems potentially at home